Uh, hello everyone. Welcome to my another webinar on JavaScript. And in this webinar, we are going to talk about all the new latest features which are coming in JavaScript, which is like ES7, ES8, ES9. We are calling it is like ES2015, 2016, 2017, and 18, and and it's going on. So few features, a few set of features are are getting released uh, by TC39, and there is a ICMA script community. They are deciding what all features we can roll out in a particular stack like we have ES 2015 which is we are calling as a ES6 ES 2018 will be called as a ES9 okay so in this webinar uh, we are just going to talk about those features what all are coming in JavaScript and if you wanted to use them obviously you can use just a Babel polyfills or Babel plugins and you can start using those features and those plugins in JavaScript okay so I already have published a blog on this and what it is talking about it is talking about what all features we have in different segments which is ES8, ES9, ES6 right so we have ES2015 which we are calling as ES6 then we have ES2016 we are calling it as a ES7 similarly like we can call it as ES6, ES7, ES8 and there are a lot of new features introduced so I already published a blog and what it is talking about what all features we have in 2015 which now I think most of you guys are familiar because we are using the ES6 everywhere either you write react, angular or node.js we are writing classes we are using the spread operator, rest parameter, arrow functions classes, these ES6 modules we are using destructuring to extract out the values from an, an array and we are using triple dot spread operator to spread the array and concat the objects okay uh, declaration of variables using latin const use, uses of promises in the in your code where you wanted to make an api call and all so i will be just skipping or uh, just quickly going through all these things like how you can just create a simple module uh, if we just create a es6 module then we export that module so that from other place that can be imported so we have a named export or the default export this is called a named export we are exporting only a particular module when you wanted to say okay import import hello from hello it means you are doing a doing a default export okay these are named export then we talk about the arrow functions why it was introduced and what all things it is helping us we used to do explicit bind then arrow function came and we don't need to do it we can just define it like this and uh, you can just create an arrow function. So arrow function is just do, providing us a lexical scope or lexical way of accessing the outer this object. So you don't need to explicitly bind it or inside inner function, you don't need to assign this function, this variable to some other variable and then use it inside an inner scope of function. I'm just, I was just showing just a limited examples like this, the default parameter, template string, then structural assignment, which is, you destructure the array and extract out the values like 1, 2, 3 and foo is an array so 1 will get the 1 string, 2 will get the 2, 3 will get the 3 and nobody will get the 4 so here first will get the first and last will get the last last one is a 4 so this is structural assignment and we have structural assignment of object like we did in, in array so same thing applies to an object you can just get the values directly otherwise in general programming what you have to do to extract the values uh, const name equal to student dot name right then we have a spread, a spread operator what it is doing it is it is helping us to concat two arrays right so it is spreading the values from an array spreading the values from array two and now it is wrapping that them into a new array right so it is same as it is same as you were doing earlier concat and manually doing a push right so you can also, you can use this spread operator to create a new array out of existing array, merge two array, or create a copy of uh, an array, copy of an object using triple dot. It is same as object dot assign. It is doing a shallow copy of only parent elements in an object. Okay, so these things we used in React or Angular more. Like if in, in React we used to pass the props, right? So we used to write dot 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 props. So this is a spread operator we are just passing all the other arguments we extract out only type and number from here 
the rest all we are passing so this component might be doing something with that promises promises is uh, used to deal the asynchronous behavior it can be resolved it can be rejected and it can be invoked like the value can be accessed from the rejection and uh, rejection and resolution of promise can be done using dot then you can do a dot catch uh, on it so if you are getting any error like pro promise is rejected then this catch will get executed same thing you can just do using a sync await so await can throw an error right so we should wrap it inside a try catch so await this is a promise if this promise is rejected then it will go into the catch block now that was just about es6 now new feature in of es7 we are calling it as es2016 and es7 so new features which i can think of is error includes methods used to determine whether an array contains a specified value it returning a boolean and then another thing is the power method dot power so there is another way of writing it you can just use this a uh, double asterisk so a asterisk asterisk b means it is same as math dot power a comma b okay include methods is just about including checking the values inside an array or not now okay this was just two features in es7 or es2016 now coming back to es2000 es8 and es2017 okay so in es8 we have a few new methods you can say so we already know i mean we have already used the, these methods somewhere with the help of babel uh, we have async await support object dot values entries object dot entries object dot values object dot keys and these new methods are pad start pad end the padding string uh, reaches the current length okay now another feature i mean string pad start and pad end is the two methods added on the string prototype comma is allowed at the end of the function parameter list so earlier till today we can't add a just additional comma out of uh, up from the list of arguments in a function but now you can add it get on property descriptor so apart from the inherited properties you can get the property descriptor of an object property descriptor means it will give you the definition of individual properties in an object in terms of readable configurable writable okay it's like a sync await now you can just simply write it uh, anywhere await new promise so await will always return a promise and if you are writing await inside a function then you have to make that function async then only it will be able to wait for this particular promise to either resolved or rejected object dot keys will give you the keys like foo and bar keys are nothing but the index okay values will be the values of those keys like bar and 42 object dot entries will give you an array of all the entries so this is a first entry this is a second entry you will get that in an array so here i did a for loop I will just zoom it a little bit so it is clear. So I'm just doing a loop key and value from object dot entries. So you are running a for of loop onto an array having key and value. So you will get a key and value both separately. Okay, this is just a just a quick trick to get the key to access the keys and values from an object. Okay, okay. So object dot entries will give you just this. You can just create a map around it, and you will create a map of foo bar and bench. Okay, string padding. So you can just use this uh, pad string pad start and pad end. So what it is taking is it is uh, target length, the target length of to which the current string need to be populated. If the value is less than length of the current string, the current string itself is returned. So just a basic rules how the pad start or pad string method works. Like you see, console.log, this is a string you are passing, and string dot pad start from now the first argument is a target length and the pad string is a string okay so pad start and pad end methods has been added uh, in this get on property descriptors it will do nothing but it will just define it will give you the more details about the individual properties that property can be uh, enumerable configurable writable and the getter setters okay get on property descriptor method returns an object the property names of all the objects it will just give you the definition of all the properties inside it okay so i mean you can just take a look onto it shared array buffer object shared array buffer object this is something new and i haven't gone much uh, in depth about it shared array buffer is a multiple web workers can read and write a same block of memory so overall if you think like there is a one memory 
and you have some data around it to just uh, to get the multi-threading support available multiple threads can access the same memory data so all these atomic object methods has been added atomic dot add atomic dot add so add an array element in the specified location to given value and returns the value of the element before it is added okay so all these atomic operations has been added and there are many more our atomic dot weight store or and load exchange compare exchange these are important and maybe become more powerful with the evolution new features in es9 which like asynchronous iterator the the more most cool coolest feature which i see the asynchronous iterator we always face a problem when we wanted to run a loop and do some asynchronous operation because that asynchronous loop that loop is always synchronous and you wanted to do some asynchronous stuff around it then what we used to do we used to write a ify block or we used to write a i mean a block level scope using let or we used to just push all these promises inside an array then used to do promise dot all in that case right so we can write asynchronous iterator in that case we will be able to write await in the for loop itself so it will wait for the first execution to be done then it will go for the second one so this is something different from what we are doing in traditionally okay so template string of known escape sequence so i mean when you are passing a template string you don't need to write a wrapper around the functions while calling it you can just part it, pass the template string like this okay so tags allow you to parse the template string with functions the first parameter of the tag function contains the array of string values okay whatever the values you are passing though so you are just passing only single string so it can be accessed at the zeroth index uh, regular expressions there are many changes in the regular expressions uh, and i might be covering some of that so here this is constant registration date something like this okay you just execute that expression now you are going to get all the from the match object you will get the year month day so this year this expression will be able to hold the year value this will be able to hold month value it will be able to hold a day value so you can just capture out all the values directly if you see the if you are passing the date stamp like this then it will come to know okay this is the year this is the month and this is the day okay so regular expressions named capture group so because here i wanted to capture year here i wanted to capture month and day so you have created a regex to capture all these elements okay promiseify dot finally important one again so sometimes we wanted to do is if either promise is rejected and resolved we wanted to do some particular stuff so that you can put in the finally block and finally block will always execute no matter your no matter what happens with the promise rejected or resolved okay another thing is in es10 or es2019 we have these methods flat and flat map okay you have a different array of different length i mean there can be a nested array right but what you want is you wanted to flatten them then you can just use array dot prototype dot flat if you pass the infinity then whatever the nesting you have done in an array it will give you the flat array if, or you can also pass the depth if you have the depth of nesting of an array till one level just pass that so flat and flat map flat map is just going to do some manipulation map is always manipulations and return a new array okay so flat and flat map so the basic function flat method is used to reduce the dimension of an array how you will create a three dimensional two dimensional array by doing the nesting but sometimes we wanted to flatten them so we used array dot prototype dot flat so here flat one level flat it's in nested right so it will it will not do the array flat uh, it will not do the flatten of array for five and six because you haven't defined depth by default it will take care of the one level so if you just specify the two then it will flatten all the array like this array dot flatten if you pass infinity no matter how much nesting you have done you will get the final output like this okay flat map means iterate onto the element and do something first of all flatten them and do some manipulation so you can see the array dot flat and what i wanted to return i wanted to return another array having twice of that value so it will just new array will be array of array inside array okay now you can just do a flat map onto this and you will get the actual value so here you are doing a map and then flat map so what you are doing you can just combine them flat and flat map 
and you will get the value. So only flatten the array return by the function in the flat map. Okay, it is a little tricky. The flat map flat is very clear. It is going to flat it, but using flat map, you can also create a nested array or two dimensional array like this. Here you just do a map and return and another array for every iteration. This is sim this is the traditional way of doing it. Now the same thing you can do with the flat map. Okay, x and x2. So array one dot flat map. It will return you another array. Trim start and trim end method of the string. So we already talked about it. So that was a pad start and pad end. So trim start and trim end will be just trimming up the the spaces from the start of the string. It will remove the spaces from the end of the string. Object dot from entries. So we talked about object dot keys, object dot values, object dot entries. Here this is another method. Object dot from entries. So it is method is to return an array of key and value pair of enumerable properties of a given object. It's a little tricky, but it is if your uh, collection is enumerable, then it will give you the all the key value pairs. So you can see we have created the map object with this key and this value. And now from the entries of this map, we are going to create uh, the entries. Entries will be the foo bar and badge. So you can see we I created this key value pair for this map object and then this map object I'm passing from the from entries and this is iterable sequence so it will do you. So the object dot from, uh, from entries map can be converted to an, an object so you can see this is an array from entries array it will give you the object. So what it is doing indirectly from entries is converting this nested array into an object. Okay, just just keep that in mind. Like this is the object dot from entries. So this is an array. So all the entries key value pair we have zero a one b. Right. So it will just this is the first key value pair, the second key value pair, and third key value pair. Uh, string dot prototype dot match all. I mean all the matching strings. It will give you. So this is uh, the string you are passing. This is the regex. So constant match of string dot match regex. So it will give you all the matcher expressions. I mean, it was just I think little extension we have. Uh, so all these try catch block is to modify the catch bindings. I think you don't need to specify error here, error block to capture that. If you don't want it to do that error handling, just do it like this. Okay. So all these features are very important ones where which we have added like in the ES6, ES7, ES8, and ES9 respective features you just need to be aware about how what all new features are coming pad start pad and trim start trim and uh, asynchronous iterator okay and uh, i will just uh, go through once again so we have get on property descriptor pad start pad and object dot keys values and entries okay some regex expression uh, with mapping is has been introduced object expansion operator object promise file promise dot final i mean you just create a promise and you will be able to add a finally method now new features in es7 is this global this from entries description match all okay so a lot of new features are there we just go through them and have a look i will maybe posting another webinar to cover all these things from a code perspective uh, thanks everyone. So in the video description, I'm putting all the links of what all the future playlist and about this playlist also. So you can have a look.